The following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. We are back. Giants baseball, past, present, and future. I'm Ralph Tycho of the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. The host of the show, Michael Duca. How are you? I'm not bad, Ralph. How about your own self? Oh, good, good. Middle of the summer, almost. Uh, I was going to say spring, but it's uh, a day or so away from uh, changing of the seasons. And it's nice in Northern California. What can I say? It is. It's a little breezy here in my backyard in Richmond, but uh, we'll tolerate that over 95 or 100 degree heat, believe me. Right. And um, even when it does warm up, there is a breeze in the Bay Area, and uh, we only get about 10, maybe 15 days of actual warm summer. It, mostly, um, it's spring and fall weather um, all through the year. So, we're happy from that standpoint. All right, still with us. I am, but you were breaking up. I was not able to hear your last comment at all. Oh, okay. Let me try again. Um, we're talking about the weather in, San, in the Bay Area and how um, even when uh, it's warm, uh, it's only summery, actually, for 10, 15 days a year. And the rest is, uh, is fall, spring-type weather. Yeah, I guess by the standards of the rest of the country, we don't have that much of a summer here. Uh, where I live, I'm actually in a little bit of a rain shadow of Point Richmond, and we've got a banana belt. It's usually about 8 to 10 degrees warmer in my uh, immediate area than it is in what's reported as being Richmond. Um, so I get, I get, uh, I would say probably of the 91 days of summer, I would guess that on about 40 of them, the temperature reaches 80 in my yard. Oh, very nice. I didn't realize that um, the weather was uh, that much different uh, where you are in the point, because Richmond is generally the same type of weather as Alameda. Alameda and San Francisco both, yeah. It's generally subject to... Uh, Lots of low clouds and fog in the summertime and uh, high humidity and lots of wind. Um, but uh, we're a little bit in the wind shadow and we are very much in the cloud shadow. It's, it, it's, it's really it's fun for us when we drive home from a Giants night game in the summertime. It'll be socked in, maybe even ground fog sometimes, but socked in overhead. Uh, all the way until we come around the curve and kind of get start to get behind Point Richmond, and then it's crystal clear. And we, we, we'll drive under overcast all the way home, and when we get home, we can look at the stars. Nice, nice. They say you can drive for a half an hour in, in the Bay Area, and the weather changes by 10, 15 degrees every time. Oh yeah, I mean, if you if you watch the weather reports in the summertime, they will show you uh, occasionally microclimate differences, and it might be 58 degrees at Point Reyes and 104 in Concord, which is only 28 away. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> uh, what a what a state where you can go to the ocean one and uh, the mountains and ski the same day. Uh, it's nice. How about we talk a little Giants ball? Uh, another injury bug, Longoria this time. Is it going to be one of those seasons it lo looks to be? One of those seasons. I don't think we can we can deny it. Um, you know, the list is is epic. I mean, nobody is representing here that this was going to be a World Series winning team as it was constructed in the first place. But, you know, it would be nice if they actually got a chance to play a game or two together this year. Yeah. I mean, you, you started the season without Bumgarner. You almost immediately added Cueto to the list. We've been without Panic, Belt, uh Crawford's been on maternity or paternity leave for a little while. We've been without Longoria now. 
we want to say the closure of Mellencom was was Melan- down. Melanson was out for a good chunk of time. Um, uh, Samarja, um, yeah, it's I mean that's it's a pretty good team that's not that playing be enough. Should that what you say? What you covered along with Longoria was the entire infield, the first three starting pitchers, the closer, and uh, that should that should be enough, right? Right. Well, and, and, and let's not forget to add to that list Mac Williamson, who hit three home runs in five days and then suffered the concussion and has hit one in 17 games since. Hurts. Absolutely. Um, can you, as with most seasons that go down the tubes, something comes out of it that's positive? Can uh, some player emerges, some, somebody gets a chance they wouldn't have gotten. Can you put your finger on something that is positive out of all of this? I can put my finger on two somethings that are positive to this point and maybe one or two more coming down the road. Um, okay. Definitely Alan Hansen is a positive. Um okay. There's certainly a case to be made for Pablo Sandoval being a positive. He's just quietly sitting out there playing wherever you stick him and hitting 280 with some power. He's going to go down as one of the most beloved giants ever after this. What is I think so, and I think part of it is because even through a season like this, he clearly plays with joy every day. And, you know, I think the fans – have enough angst of their own, they don't need to see the players displaying it also. I think it really helps when you see a player who just clearly loves doing what he's doing. Um, Additionally, um, I think Tony Watson has been a very, very positive thing. You know, the Giants, I mean, remember, he was a very late signing. He signed in the last week of spring training. Right. And and uh, possibilities down the road, Austin Slater and Steven Duggar. I mean, both of those guys are playing as though they are going to force their way into a lineup. And forcing their way into the lineup may mean the end of the line for Hunter Pence. And... Uh, you know, it's hard to say what it may mean for either Gorky Hernandez or or um, McCutcheon is on a one contract right. is over. So I think the Giants were hoping that Duggar would push him anyway. But um, you know, Hernandez has actually played some pretty nice ball and and probably qualifies for your initial question of. Uh, name a good thing that's happened this year. Uh, I don't think anybody expected to see him sitting on half a dozen home runs and a, you know, and a very respectable batting average and good defense. Right. Um, what do you think of the transition in pitching coaches from Rigetti to Young? How has that taken hold? Well, the one thing, you know, I preface this by saying I'm not an expert on any of these things, and all I can do here is repeat what I've heard because, you know, what I know would not make for a very interesting or long conversation. But um, what I have heard is that the A's let Kurt Young go because they were concerned about how many injuries they had on their pitching staff. And, you know, he certainly had to preside over a lot of them this year, too. I honestly believe that those are coincidental. I don't think they had anything to do with his transitioning into being over the staff. I think it's too soon uh, for his influence to have been felt in that way. But, um, you know, it, it's a different voice, and sometimes people better or differently to a different voice, and sometimes they don't. And I think right now um, – the jury's out. Uh, last night was certainly a difficult, if not if not impossible, loss for Giants fans to swallow. I, I was sitting with Kevin Franzen during part of the game, and 
when it was four to nothing uh, in the top of the fifth inning, I, I told him, I said, this feels just like last week. He said, you mean like low energy, like in Miami? I said, no, like they haven't scored enough, but they've quit. And he said, yeah, that would be my one real major criticism of this team is that it does not seem to be able to stick its foot on the other team's windpipe that's appropriate. Mm. Now, that could speak to the manager. That could speak to a lot of things. I think that speaks to uh, clubhouse leadership, too. Mm -hmm. And it won't get better with Longoria out, that's for sure. No, because what what losing Longoria does, you may get an adequate replacement in Sandoval. Uh, you know, I'd say eighty to eighty-five percent, maybe even ninety percent defensive replacement and eighty percent uh, hitting replacement. But that shortens your bench dramatically. Exactly. Yes. And as versatile as he is, you could ill afford to lose lose a guy who could play second. He play, he's played first, he's pinch hit, and has played third. So, um, yeah. And pitched. Tough one. And pitched. Yeah, that, that one pitch. Actually, he pitched quite effectively. It looked yes, like he, he did. Some stuff. The, um, yes, he, you uh, wonder he, about he, guys he, and athletes. Let me ask you a question. It's off the Giants' uh, standpoint and talking about athletes and guys who may pitch, Aaron Judge, I think, if you've noted, noticed, has the best arm of our time. I mean, back to Parker, Ferrillo, uh, this guy can throw like hell. And I wonder if someday he might do the reverse of what Ruth did and build up some numbers as a hitter and then become a pitcher. He threw a ball from the outfield at 100 miles an hour the other day, and it was a, a, a peg, if you will, to, to third base. So, um, Well, out, out, outfield arms are a thing of beauty. I'm not ready to proclaim him the best of our age. I mean, I the best throw I ever saw in my life from an outfielder um, – was Ichiro Suzuki's introduction to the Oakland A's fans, his very first game in Oakland. Uh, he came in on a ball in medium right center field, heeled it on a hop, and with his next stride unleashed a throw that nailed Terrence Long going from first to third by 15 feet. Whoa. And the throw was on the fly, directly into the glove of the third baseman sitting on the bag. I've never seen a throw like that before or since. And it was well, never, and I mean never, Ralph, more than seven feet off the ground. From the point of release, it was downhill if it was moving at all. A man who d never got enough press. <laughs> um... It seemed that he did because he he had the Japanese press following him and what have you. But he was much more of a celebrity in Japan than he ever was here. And yep. um, sure to be a Hall of Famer. I think it was. Uh, and, and, and well, well deserved. Right. May have over 3,000, well, may have as many hits as Rose if you combine the, um, he, the he, he passed Pete two and a half years ago. I just saw oh, wow. my own. I saw my old post on it. Um, yeah, I, um, and I because I, I remember scolding people. I said he, he, it was when he crossed the three thousand hit threshold here. He was already like a hundred hits past Pete career, and you know I. Uh, I, I remember telling people, whatever you do, don't don't negate what he did over there just because it was over there. It's uh, it's pretty much the same feat. You know, home runs you might be able to lessen a little bit, but hits are hits. Right, and as it's been proven, Japanese pitches are incredibly effective too. Yeah, yeah. So, um, 
Yeah, hats off to him. He gets to retire. I thought he'd go back and play some more in the Japanese League. Apparently, he's going to uh, be an executive with Seattle. Well, again, we'll see how things play out. I mean, um, you know, he he has not even officially announced his retirement yet. He's announced he's on an extended hiatus, but uh, he may he may yet uh, suit up and make another appearance. I know that uh, he still takes batting practice every day, and I know he can still hit the ball into the uh, bleachers in Oakland. I've seen it. Right. So does he go on the road with the team and um, yeah, yeah, act as yep. a coach? He goes on the road with the team. I don't know what he acts as. I don't think okay. he's a uniformed coach. Right. Well, he's there, a, are, there, are, there are limits to how many of those you're allowed to suit up. But he does go on the road. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, at least he came to Oakland. Okay. Well, that's... That's something. Maybe he likes Oakland. How many people can Maybe. say that? Except me and you. I like Oakland. Yeah. Weather-wise, culture-wise, this is a very underrated city in the United States. Aside that, Brooklyn of the West Coast. Yes, yes. Very unappreciated. And um, great restaurants, great, great art. They've got an art walk every week that's unbelievable. And a great-spirited mayor who was the first to come up against that tyrant, uh, Trump, in his uh, in the rounding up of people. Um, she warned some people, and uh, at the risk of her own career and her own freedom, um, just to stand at to stand up against what this country is has become. It isn't us, and um, she's one of the first to say it. So hats off to Libby Schaff, mayor of Oakland. Michael, let's talk about uh, Timmy Lincecum. It was his birthday last week. He is, if I'm not mistaken, still in the... Phillies minor league system. Am I correct about that? Uh, to be honest with you, I do not know where he went after he was released by the Rangers. Uh, I know that a lot of people, there was a lot of sentiment for him coming and signing with the Giants for one day and retiring as a Giant, but he's not ready to retire. Right. Right. And he is another one who, when, you, when they look back on the mini dynasty, he didn't really get as much appreciation as he should have, along with Kane. Um, and the he first get... playoff game that Timmy ever pitched may have been the most perfectly pitched game I've ever seen. Really? You're right. Most people don't even remember it. Okay, that's a good example of what I'm saying. Uh, tell us about it. Well, it was just, you know, it was just absolute dominance. I, I you know, you're, you're asking a guy who's seen 4,000 games to pluck one out of his memory bank accurately. I could pluck one. It may not be the right one. Um, but my recollection is that uh, he struck out 14 in that game. And at no time did anyone feel like there was even the opportunity to take a breath in the opposite dugout. It felt like he smothered them from his first warm-up pitch. Nice. Nice. Good memory of Timmy. Um, I hope he makes it back. You know, he's 34 years old. Mm-hmm. Just turned 35, but uh, young, even for a pitcher in today's day and age. Uh, I, I really, you root for a guy like that who was so real with with the fans. So um, he's like a little boy, really. Is like uh, uh, you want to protect him as as a teammate, I'm sure. 
but boy, uh, as in shape as anybody in the game. Wiry, uh, wow. Uh, loved one. Well, there's, there's a really good, really good comparison. If you close your eyes and think about it, and you, you you can see Timmy on the mound, and you can see that wind up, and you can see the amazing power with which he releases a pitch. And then think of Ron Guidry. Boy, I was yes, Louisiana Lightning. Very yeah, very and 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 I was told by a scout of forty five years' experience that there have been three players in his history of the game, so in the last 50 years, three players that he knows of who could stand on the warning track facing the outfield wall and climb it without using their hands. In other words, step on the wall and then continue all the way over and do a full 360 and land back on his feet. It was Ron Guidry, Bo Jackson, and Tim Lincecum. Wow. Is that some good company? Bo Jackson. Yeah, and two, two of the three were built like gymnasts. <laughs> two, two of the three were built like gymnasts, and the third one was built like the equipment a gymnast used. <laughs> Bo, <laughs> it's very, very good, very good. So just kind of walking up the the wall like Spider Man, and doing a bad mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of a human NPR raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And then there was Kane who came along. And when he was going downhill, I might have mentioned this before, I was really ashamed of the Giants fans. They just didn't stick with him, and they gave him a lot of heat. Why, I don't know. But um, they never took to him like they did Timmy. Uh, Yeah, and I'm not sure why, because, you know, Timmy came to them fully fledged as a college pitcher who'd come up the minor leagues, and Matt Cain was signed as as a barely 18-year-old out of high school in Tennessee, and I believe he made the majors when he was 20, something like that, 20 or 21. I mean, it, it didn't take him very long to get there. He was very young, and everybody was clamoring for him for two or three months before they finally did bring him up. Um, and I think a lot of people forgot that Towards the end of his career, he, gosh, you know, it, it, it seemed like he was doing an endless series of commercials for Dignity Health. And he had the bone chips in his elbow, spur, and then he had issues with an ankle that required surgery. And, you know, pitchers are, are just, a, you know, a series of levers. And then the hinge in the lever is broken, and if your ankle isn't working right, then you're landing for the base And gee, what a surprise that you lose command. Right. Right, and it's always the way of it that one injury begets another injury by compensation. So, if, like you say, if you hurt your left knee, your right ankle's going to suffer, and then your left hip. And then from your left hip to your right knee, and it, it, that sort of thing. And um, it goes on. Okay. Do I still have you? May have lost you. No, you're breaking uh, up. I'm Am I breaking up for you? Yeah, a little bit. Um Okay. So let me re- let me repeat that. In order for these guys to reach a level where we actually care about them, they have to have an unhealthy amount of self confidence and competitiveness, and those two things lead you to get back out on the field too early, and that's where the 
in. Mm. Okay, Michael. Um, I'm going to have to – we have basic phone problems. Um, I'm going to wrap it up. All right. And uh, are you with – are you with me here? I am. I am. Uh, oh, okay. Good. Finish your thought, Michael. We're having some in and out phone problems. Ma Bell, Comcast got together and said, let's mess with the little Jewish kid this morning. <laughs> <laughs> they do that occasionally, you know. What was the last thing you heard? And then they think that I'm paranoid. I, I don't understand that one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I may not be paranoid, but there are a lot of people after me. Right. That would believe me if you could only catch them. <laughs> so, so so, here's my question for you. Where did you last hear me opining? Because I don't want to repeat myself. Oh, you're talking about Matt Cain and how uh, for an athlete to um, gain our affection – they have to have a certain amount of confidence that uh, makes them come back from injury a little before they should. Right, right. And and essentially, I had finished that thought, so I think we're good. I'm going to let you call it a day. Beautiful. Thank you, Michael. I enjoy your company. I enjoy learning from you. And uh, I enjoy bemoaning with you. You're one of the few people who care. So, um, you know, giant, giant baseball is a passionate thing, and uh, when I get to talk to the, one of the most passionate, um, it's a good day for me. Well, thank you. You know, this is a year that Giant fans and Mets fans can get together in the emergency room waiting room and commiserate. Right. Absolutely. And if you sit, you sit in the emergency room long enough, one of your favorite players will come in. And exactly. Even, exactly. Eventually, you, you get to get autographs and uh, chat them up, and uh, they'll remember your interaction five years from now, and you say, I saw it when, when you got your, your knee went out. Uh, and he'll go, yeah, that was great, great. Thanks for the memory. Yeah. You betcha. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will talk with you soon. I hope you stay well and uh, go Giants. The show is Giants Baseball, past, present, and future. The network is the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. I'm Ralph Tycho. Obviously, the weak link of it all, Michael Duca is the host of the show, and he's terrific. See you next week, Mike. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening, everybody.